In this video, I am going to be reviewing my live one-on-one -on -one session with the very well-known Dr. Gabor Mate, where we are working with my parenting guilt and using his process of compassionate inquiry. So let's get into it. I'm also happy to work with people, if anybody wants that, online here. If there's any problem, you want me to work with you, if you're open enough to doing so online in front of 82 strangers from all over the world, why not, you know? But th but that depends on the individual. So uh, I can work with this any other way you want. You can start with your questions, perhaps, if you like. But if somebody really would like to work, and we can demonstrate it, and of course, they can be a teacher to the rest of the group. Mike Stroh, you have um, raised your hand, so to speak. So go ahead. Okay, I'm just going to pause it there. So this comes from a community of practitioners and people working with world experts like Gabor Mate. It was called Rebel Wisdom. It no longer exists. It was very. It was a big community throughout the pandemic. As Gabor Mate said there, if anyone, I can't remember what he said, courageous enough or open enough. And part of what we're trying to learn here is if we want to change ourselves, change our experience, address the problems in our lives, we need to open up. Okay, we need to open up. We need to be open. We need to be willing. And fundamentally, we need to be honest about what's going on with us. And so many people have such a hard time asking for help or acknowledging they could use help. And you can see that here in this in this group here, 82 people of practitioners, people, regular people, all kinds of different people, and nobody was putting up their hand. So I have had the fortune of working with a lot of great teachers. I've spent a lot of time working on my personal stuff. And this video was from a handful of years ago. And even at that time, I'd done a lot of work. So for me, this was a wonderful opportunity to work with a, a world expert like Dr. Gabor Mate. And as you see in the conversation, some of my own insecurities and inadequacies come up and you'll see how that goes. Okay, let's get back to it. Sure, thank you. Uh, Mike, hi. Thanks for Can I say a few yeah. things? Ground rules, okay? So first of all, uh, thank you for doing this. Secondly, you'll find me interrupting you okay, at times. If I do yeah. so, it's because I think it's helpful to do that. It's not because I'm impatient or I'm bored or I'm or, or I think you're wrong. Okay, none of that. It's just I'm gonna move the process along for your benefit. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, any question I ask you is an invitation, not a demand. So if I ask you something and you don't feel like answering it, even if, if mid into your answer, midway into your answer, you realize I'm not comfortable talking about this, you just stop. You just say so. Okay. But until you do say so, I'm going to assume that it's okay with you. Is that fair enough? And the final, the final thing I'll say is, I don't know what problem you're going to present me with, but I really have no idea whether I can help you at all. It's an experiment, right? As long as you're willing to be part of an experiment, I am, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll come out of it looking totally incompetent. I don't know. Give it a chance. <laughs> okay. So what would you like to talk about? I'll just jump in here quickly there. So as you can see, he acknowledged this boundary of sharing things openly and publicly and our ability to, or just to give me the invitation to say no or to pause or to redirect the conversation as I will. And often you will see people in conversations like this or interactions like this where people tend to get a bit pushy or they tend to insert their wisdom where it's not uh, solicited or asked for. And so I think he did a great job here of outlining that and gave me the control over what was said, what isn't said and, and that kind of thing. And as a therapist myself, that's often something that I really try to remind people of and encourage in people is you are the master of your process. Okay, I really try to remind people, but they're in control of their process. 
And at any point, if they choose to say no, then they have that option. Okay, and let's get back to the video. Sure. Um, I guess just to preface what you were saying, I this is a bit of an indulgement for me because I have done a lot of these type of things, but it's I always love doing them again uh, or more. And specifically, I read Stop recently right listened to. Stop right there. Please, yeah. One of the things they do in compassion inquiries is that pay attention to people's language, okay? Now, if I was working with Melissa or David or Alexander or anybody else, would you say to them, oh, are you indulging yourself? No. But notice you said it to yourself. Yes. Which means that there's an element of lack of compassion for the self. Notice that? Yes. Even as you're asking your help for help, you're kind of excusing yourself. Okay? I'm kind of what, sorry? Excusing yourself or... or, or yes, or, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, let's just notice that. Nothing wrong with that. I'm, this is not to make you wrong. It's just an automatic tendency that you might notice in yourself. Okay? All right. Definitely. Fair enough. Thank you. Please carry on. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm never, no matter how much help I get, I'm still not worthy of getting it. Um, okay, I'll pause it there because there were a lot of comments in the, the original video about that little interaction right there. And I think there's two, I'll, I'll share a couple of reflections on that. Number one, he's right. I am, I am excusing myself for getting this wonderful opportunity or I'm, I'm, I remember part of me thought, well, I've already done so much work. I, I've figured this thing out. Therefore, this is just extra. And that may be true in some sense. And at the same time, that doesn't mean that I'm not worthy of deserving of this wonderful experience with uh, a world famous guy like him. And on the other side of that, sometimes we need to recognize that part of ourselves that, and maybe this is true for some of you, maybe not others, that thinks I'm not worthy or that person won't want to hear what I have to say or if I ask for help, it won't be received properly. Or if I put myself out there, somehow something's going to go wrong. So part of this little moment certainly was a little bit of insecurity on my part. Again, this was in front of 82 strangers. Although I speak in front of strangers all the time, I've spoken in front of thousands and thousands of people. It still came up and, and he's right. It's important to recognize that. And I have had the fortune, as I mentioned, of working with great teachers throughout the years, and I've really dedicated myself, even up until today, uh, to work on myself, to address all the things from my past, to promote my well-being in the present moment, and all of those kind of things. So remember, you are worthy. How can you ever be worthy if you don't ask for help, seek help, and receive the help when it's presented to you? Okay, so please encouraging yourself to don't hold back when you have opportunities like this, okay? Let's get back to the video. So, yeah, I read or I listened to The Scattered Mind recently. And the tiny backstory is I was chronic addict from about 12 to 30, got married, sobered up, had a kid. And as you know, marriages when with one person in recovery tend to be difficult. And so it was pretty difficult for the first five years or so. We have two kids, one of which, and I have a diagnosis of ADHD. Um, I guess it's been almost 10 years since I've been sober, et cetera. But my son has ADHD and he's eight. And so where I struggle, and I've 
done the mindful self-compassion, a lot of that training is still like a lot of what you said in that book was so relevant in terms of the, my own childhood, my wife's childhood, um, and the stress in our home for my son and daughter that has diminished quite a lot over the past five years or so, but there's still remnants of it. And also obviously the first five years of his life were pretty stressful. So I have shame associated to that. I, I get into my own catastrophizing of like, Oh, I didn't do this. And every time he acts a certain way and I respond with anger or impatience, the catastrophizing goes. And so I think part of it's like self forgiveness slash being as responsible and attuned to him. I think you use that word a lot, attunement. Um, and so we have, as a family, we've certainly healed and we continue to practice, but yeah, I, I just, that's a gnawing angst inside and uh, there's shame there for sure. Yeah. I got it. And uh, as a parent, I, as you know, from that book, I, I went to the same yeah. thing. And uh, even long after I wrote that book, I continued to carry guilt and self-blame about what I, the experiences that my children had in a home with two very stressed parents, sometimes at each other's throats and sometimes not talking to each other at all. Yeah. Okay, so just to revisit my little explanation there, I'll just add I don't think I really experience that anymore, which is wonderful. I've practiced a lot, even since this video, on letting go of that. And I recognized here I use the word shame, not guilt. He uses the word guilt. And and I, I like, I didn't notice that in the previous review or, the, or watching this in the past. So the shame that I carry here is I am bad. Because of my past or because of my current behavior, I'm a bad person, therefore I'm not deserving of fill in the blank. And that still comes up sometimes, but not as much as it did anymore because I'm much more aware of it. And since this video, I've practiced again, as I mentioned, a lot. And to go a little bit deeper, my awareness of my catastrophizing and my worrying and projecting uh, onto my son here, a lot of that comes from my mindfulness practice. A lot of that comes from some of the wisdom from cognitive behavioral therapy and other modalities. And just to reiterate this importance of practice, of seeking answers, of asking for help, and of implementing the suggestions with some humility, some courage, and some hope, perhaps even some faith. Okay, so let's go back to his response. So I get that. Um, one of my sons and, and I, his name is Daniel. Him and I are actually going to write a book together called Hello Again, A Fresh Start for Adult Children and Their Parents. And uh, that's after we finish this current book. And you might want to look at YouTube and look us up in this talk that we give together on, on that topic. Now, I know your kids are not adults yet, but you just might get something out of it. Okay? Yeah. What's it called? Sorry. Hello again. Just, just just Google Daniel and Gabor Mate. That's all on YouTube. You'll find it. It's been seen by about three hundred thousand people. Now, go back to your shame. Just want to jump in there. Hello again. The video he referenced with his son is is excellent. I watched it quite soon after this experience. And for anyone who, whether or not you say hello again or you re-engage with your parents, that doesn't really matter so much. There's a lot of wisdom in there and there's a lot of good role modeling on how you, in some sense, it's a family therapy session for them out loud with a moderator. It's quite interesting. And so it just, again, it's about us learning from others. They do a great job role modeling this idea of re-engaging with the past and, and in some sense, attuning to the present and how they can move forward as father and son, parent and child. So I do encourage you to go check that out. Okay, let's get back to the video. Shame and guilt. So let's agree on something. Had you not had been addicted, had you not been going through difficult recovery, 
had your, your, your in your life had not had significant deep stresses that went back to your childhood and to hers, otherwise she wouldn't have been with you. So it's not just about you, by the way. Yes, totally. Yeah. <laughs> But had that not have happened, your children would have an easier time in life. Let's agree on that, okay? Let's also agree that had all that stuff not happened, they wouldn't be facing some of the difficulties that they're facing right now. That's true, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So that is true. How do we separate that from the guilt, though? So let me ask you this question. Before he jumps in with a question, I, I want to jump in there. What he is referring to there, which I think is really important, is just this idea of coming to terms with the way things are. So much of our suffering and so much of the struggles we have in life are a result of us resisting and also refusing, perhaps, to acknowledge that things are the way they are. We can't go back into the past. We can't change the things we've done. We can't change the things we've said. What we can do is act in the present moment. And that's such a helpful reminder here, okay? It's important to recognize the causes and conditions that led to the present moment and to do our best to let go of them. And obviously in this video, I'm working on letting go of those or I'm presenting a situation where I'm not letting go perhaps sometimes. And so my invitation to you is to remember you didn't choose your parents, you didn't choose your genetics, you didn't choose where you were born, you didn't choose all kinds of things that contributed to who you are in this moment. So is it possible for you to let go of that a little bit, to have a little forgiveness, a little bit of grace, and just to remember really that your agency is in the now, your agency is in this moment and the next moment. Let's get back to it. How, at what day, I'm going to ask you a number of questions, okay? Inquiry. The first question, do you remember the date and the time of the day when you woke up and you decided, I'm going to screw up my kids? No. You can't remember that date? You have a bad memory of what? No, I don't have, I, I definitely have a bad memory. <laughs> it's been fried to <laughs> shit. But, but you're pretty sure that didn't, that didn't happen, right? Definitely not. So you never consciously made a decision. So I just paused it there. For any of us who are parents or non-parents and just people who, again, are holding on to past decisions and behaviors, just to remember, give yourself some grace here. And as you'll see, there, there's a nuance to this, right? Where we're not letting ourselves off the hook per se. We are not making excuses. We're not avoiding responsibility here. We need to just surrender a little bit to the egoic thought or impulse that thinks we had more control over the past or that we could have, should have, would have done something different than we did. Okay, we did what we did and it's over with. All we can do is reframe it in the present moment, reframe our memories, reframe the experience and act differently today. And that's how we forgive ourselves. It's sort of like this idea of karma. Every time we act differently in the present moment, we're draining or we're squeezing out the karmic debts of the past, the unwanted behavior and the things that we're not proud of. And again, you can only do that in the present moment. And because I have done that, over many years, I'm able to forgive myself. I'm able to let go of these things a little bit more. So it's not hopeful wishing or naive optimism. It's a sincere forgiveness that has to be borne out through our actions from moment to moment and changing our behavior. Okay, let's get back to it. The decision, did you? I'm gonna screw my kids up. No. I'm going to impose on my kids some of the traumas that I experienced. You didn't make that decision, did you? Well, no, but I have to be honest. There are moments when I have the thought, I want to make this person suffer because of my anger or something like that. I get you know? that. I get yeah, that. Okay. I yeah. get that. Okay. I'm pausing it there because it's really important. And many people, and I, I hope this comes across sincerely, many people can't acknowledge that about themselves. 
And for whatever reason, it's been pounded into my head and I've been really taught that radical responsibility is the ticket to freedom, to enlightenment, to well-being. And for me and my sanity, radical honesty is a necessity. I'm obviously not always perfect, although at the same time, I need to be able to recognize my dark side, to see my shadow self, to see all the things I don't want to see or I'd rather sweep under the rug. And I need to call them out. And once I call them out and once I can see them and be in relationship to them, they don't seem to grip me anymore. So if I have the thought, oh, this person, in this case, my child is really pissing me off and I have that impulse of anger and vengeance and I'm going to punish them to show them, right? Because I'm aware of that and because I've worked with that, then I can pause or I can not get so caught up in that storm. I can perhaps let it pass. Oh, I can breathe. And then I can act in a way that's in alignment with my values, that's in alignment with the person and the dad that I want to be and the type of parenting that I want to engage in. And it's that noticing, it's that courageous self-reflection, that radical responsibility and honesty that we really need here. So perhaps an invitation for you is to just pause the video for a moment and sit and just reflect. What is one thing about yourself that perhaps you're avoiding or hiding from? And I think that's a bit of a paradoxical question, but something you might be a little bit aware of that's just sitting underneath the surface and you don't want to face it and you know it's there. Is it possible just to touch it, recognize it, see it, allow it to be there? Oh, you don't need to do anything with it. It's just about acknowledging, recognizing, opening to so that we're not hiding from the, these sort of subconscious patterns or avoidances denials, don't even notice, I am lying type of things are there. Okay, and we're trying to open to those things. Okay. But in terms of a decision to create problems for your kids. No, definitely no. not. Number one. Number two, how old are you as a child when your parents decided to work on themselves and to work out their traumas? So they wouldn't keep passing it on to you all the way when that happens. Still has yet to happen. Okay. But it's happened for your kids, right? Can you realize what a gift you're giving them? Can you realize how wonderful it is for them? That they have parents who are seeking to become or who are becoming conscious? So when you catastrophize, all you're doing is you're projecting your own childhood onto your kids. For sure. But, but you're not factoring in that they have different parents. Do you see that? I do. Can you acknowledge yourself for that? Yes. I can't always feel it, but I can sometimes. I'm not asking you to feel anything. I'm just asking. Can you acknowledge yourself for that? Yes. I want to pause it there because I'm touched in this moment watching this and and maybe just quick note about my parents you know perhaps that's an unfair judgment I don't really know what they've done to address their traumas and pasts uh, from what I can see I don't think they've done much and and that's a generational thing there's all kinds of factors in there so this is not about blaming my parents at all they've done everything they possibly can for me and I'm grateful for that and at the same time, of course, they could have done things differently, but I don't live in the past and that doesn't matter anymore. Let's go back to this idea of self-appreciation. I, I do a lot of work with this with my clients and also on myself, where sometimes we think acknowledging our efforts, acknowledging our value, what we're good at, there's resistance to that too. So not only do we resist the difficult bad stuff, we resist the good. And that's difficult. And so I just wanted to pause it there and just take a moment for any of you out there. And for me personally here, 
to really acknowledge, as Dr. Mate said there, what a gift I've given to my kids, my wife has given to me and my kids, in acknowledgement of my efforts for my own my efforts for my own healing journey, my wife's efforts and our efforts to create a home upon which we pass on as little trauma and, and shit to our kids as possible. Inevitably, there will be some, of course. And one helpful skill in a self-compassion practice for self-appreciation is for us to acknowledge all the people and in all the situations upon which we're grateful for and who have contributed to us becoming the person that we are today. So perhaps I can even start with Gabor Mate in this interaction. I can start with my past therapists, my meditation teachers, my friends, my peers, my sponsor in AA, Alcoholics Anonymous and other 12 steps in general. All these people have been there for me and been there in such a way that helped me become the person that I am today. And that's a beautiful gift. And I'm allowing myself to appreciate that in, that in this moment. So perhaps you pause the video, take a moment, close your eyes, maybe write it down. Can you acknowledge all the people, teachers, coaches, whoever it is, authors, who have helped you become the person that you are today and see if you can allow yourself to feel that can you give yourself that gift here and just acknowledge that there's nothing selfish about this there's no ego in this this is about sincere appreciation to the people that have helped us become who we are today <sighs> Okay, let's get back to the video. And welcome to my third question. When in your life have you not felt guilty, Mike? <laughs> um, maybe in long bouts of meditation, but uh, or maybe when I'm in the service of others, but generally speaking, it's there. No, I'm going to make a wild guess here the guilt was yours before you had kids yes it has nothing to do with your kids <laughs> uh, true enough I do want to pause that for a second because he's right here I can have which I think he's about to say some healthy remorse here, right? Or I can feel bad about situations in which I didn't behave the way I wanted to. And that's fine. What, what we're aiming at here is just to recognize that it's okay, right? Or we, we can't hold too much responsibility for our past actions or even these other actions. And so he's just pointing a little bit of that out right now. And, and the fact that I'm projecting my own guilt onto my kids or onto the situations in the present, and that's not helpful. Let's get back to the video. When we have children and we let them down in some ways, some remorse is inevitable. But that deep sense of guilt about yourself, you had that long before you even looked at your wife. Never mind your kids, right? Yeah, I mean, that's part of being an addict, no doubt, is, is no, that? Not, no, it's not part of being an addict. It's part of being a traumatized child. Yeah. Okay. I think it's important just to jump in there quickly. Sure, it might be part of being a traumatized child. Trauma is a relative term here. That's important to remember. And at the same time, it is part of being an addict. Okay, he... he for whatever reason, perhaps skips over that a little bit for the sake of the practice and the example setting here, right? Or, or for the process to move it along here. And certainly we feel guilt, which we should. Guilt is, is not a bad emotion. We feel guilty because we do things that we know aren't right. And we're not living in alignment with the 
person that we want to be. And so certainly a lot of my guilt that I carry even to this day, although I have done a lot of work on letting go and forgiving myself through my behavior, I'm able to recognize different experiences of guilt, different levels of guilt for certain things. And I do think it's important to clarify that it's perhaps it is about childhood and it's about the other things that we've done. And I think he glosses over that a little bit here. And I think he does have a tendency more generally to, it's all about childhood trauma. It's all about childhood trauma and, and et cetera. I think Dr. Mate maybe plays that a bit too much, or maybe I'm projecting here. Or maybe I'm unfairly judging him, but clearly he, he's all about trauma as you can see in his public lectures and talks and appearances on other podcasts. So let's get back to the video. <clears throat> you are guilty because you didn't make you happy, right? Didn't make my parents happy? Told them happy. Sorry, I couldn't hear you very well. No, you have some guilt because you didn't make your kids as happy as you could have. Ah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. No, you already answered my question. But who are the first? <laughs> Who are the first people you didn't make happy? My mom primarily, but yeah. That's where your guilt comes from. Because kids take that on themselves. So Thich Nhat Hanh, the spiritual teacher said that the biggest gift we can give our children is our own happiness. Mm -hmm. So you keep working on that. Your kids are going to be just fine. Now, your guilt has nothing to do with your kids. There's some healthy remorse about your kids. That's it. Yeah. But that's not good. No. Um, so your guilt predates your children. So whenever you notice that guilt, but guilt once it once it becomes ingrained, it'll use anything as further evidence. <laughs> yes. So all your guilt that you've had all your life is doing that has to do with, nothing to do with what you ever did wrong. It's, it has to do with an impossible task that you were given as a kid to make your mother happy. It was totally impossible. It should never have been your job. But you were given that, and you took it on because you couldn't help it. And you failed at it, and hence the guilt. And that guilt will now use anything as further evidence to justify its existence. Pause there. Yes, the guilt... Or our past wounds and traumas certainly do use anything they can get their hands on to justify re-experiencing or, or keeping us stuck there because without digging deep too much into that, because those are mind patterns, those are behavior patterns that have been entrenched in us. And in some way, there's an idea called the repetition compulsion. It's a bit of an OCD idea, although it it can scale to other experiences is that until we unwind memories and behavior patterns and see them what for what they are and, and introduce different patterns, we're sort of caught in this cycle of behavior. And I think that for so long reinforces this idea that there's something wrong with me and this is where it blends into shame and, and inherently I'm just wrong. Like I'm a bad, horrible human being and I don't deserve goodness. So that's where guilt for behaviors, guilt is I did something bad, shame is I am bad. And those things start to merge over time when we don't bring loving, compassionate awareness to them. So part of this inquiry process is to reflect on these things, right? to look at them with kind, loving, non-judgmental awareness, right? And being curious about the causes and conditions that led to our situation right now and to working on them. And remember, we can't do it alone. We cannot do it alone. So we need to ask for help. And the beautiful thing is, generally speaking, it's not always perfect. And maybe we get some bad help here and there. In the grand scheme of things, when we ask for and seek help, things do change and we do get better. So that's something I want to remind you of or encourage you to do. It's okay to ask for help. Go for it. You deserve it. Or you can start to believe that you deserve it by acting 
as if you deserve it. Still can't do it. <laughs> I don't try anymore. I still can't make her happy. I don't try anymore, but yeah. yeah. Well, I just yeah. noticed that the, the feeling of guilt, like when you, as a final question and I'll let you go. Yeah, sure. Um, as a final question, when you feel the guilt, where in your body do you feel it? Where does it show? hundred percent. It's like here for sure. Okay. And sometimes a little bit up here. Okay. Now allow yourself to feel into it a little bit now. Is that possible? Just, yeah. Just let it be there. Okay, so for any of you out there watching, if you are feeling any guilt or any difficult emotions or some joy at watching this exchange, tune into that for a moment. Okay, can you take a moment and recognize where in your body you have any sensations? Can you breathe into that? Can you allow it to be there with some kindness, some curiosity, and acceptance? Okay, you might even ask for, or if you had an intention to let this go or to welcome some joy or some pleasant emotions or some self-acceptance, some forgiveness, anything in some sense. It's a bit of an asking for, it's a form of prayer in some ways. May I allow myself to be as I am? May I let go of this feeling of guilt? May I let go of the criticism and the judgment that I've been carrying my whole life? Or perhaps that I've been carrying over the past few days or weeks or months? Is it possible to let go. And ask yourself this question. How familiar is that feeling to you? And how far does it go back? How familiar it is? And how far does it go back? And what, what answer might come up for you about that? Part of the answer is it's like, the main thing I am familiar with, and I don't know how far back it goes, but I'm sure it goes pretty far back. If I sat with it long enough, I'd probably get some clear images and memories. Yeah. I don't mean any specific incident, but can you agree that it goes back before you had children? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Next time it arises, do your kids a favor. Don't make it about them. <laughs> don't make it about them. Okay. They don't want to. They don't want to be the effects of your guilt. No, they do not. Nor do I want them to be the receivers of it. Yeah. Fair enough for now. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, and thanks for the rebel wisdom. Wonderful. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, comments, curiosities, please put them in the comment section. Get in touch with us through the website. All that info is in the description of this video. And I just perhaps reiterating that idea that we are responsible for our emotions. We are responsible for the stories that we project onto the world or onto other people. And when we take responsibility for those things, let them settle, get curious, perhaps inquire compassionately about their causes, then we're able to act more clearly in the present moment, right? So this doesn't mean that we don't point out unacceptable behavior of other people. It doesn't mean we don't take actions and advocate for ourselves or for others. It simply means that we take time and responsibility for our part in situations. And when we do that and when we're able to let go and when we're able to process, then our actions, our thoughts, are much more clear and are much more in alignment with good outcomes. So that's what I would leave you with today. So again, thank you so much for your time, for your energy, for your attention. I hope this was helpful for you and that you are well and that you take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.